Hey, welcome. So glad you could be with me today. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking a little bit more about um, why your dog may not be listening to you. So I did a video the other day and um, you may have seen it. And I was talking about, um, you know, all those people that are posting and just pulling their hair out. Oh my gosh, my dog won't listen to me. Um, and I wanted to expand upon that a little bit. So this is part two. Don't forget that um, while you're watching this video, if you're watching it live, if you're watching it later on, post your comments and questions. Um, post them in the comment section below this video. I am happy to answer any questions you have and you know get a dialogue going. So for those of you who may not know me, my name is Jessica. I'm a force-free dog trainer. Uh, you can find me at the Furry Family Coach on social media. And um, yeah, so this video is take two, part two, about um, why your dog may not be listening to you. So I think I called it, help, help. My dog is not listening to me. What do I do, right? So in the first video, if your dog isn't listening to you, um, the, the very first thing we have to take into consideration is the relationship between you and your dog. So if you've never tried training before, um, you know, or you just got a dog, you've never had a dog before, or the, you know, you just, you don't, you haven't built that trust with your dog through um, positive reinforcement training. The first thing you wanna do is build that bond between you and your dog. Um, you know, if, if someone comes up to you, even someone you know, and maybe there's somebody in your life that, that's like this and you already understand, um, who is just constantly negative, constantly griping at you, constantly, you're doing this wrong and why don't you fix this and, and you know, yelling at you and you don't understand, they're not giving you constructive criticism, they're just criticizing and yelling or, or in the case of, you know, you and your dog, you're yelling and they're not listening and they're not, you're saying, you know, hey, come here or stop doing that or no, don't chew on that, right? So you haven't built that bond between you and your dog um, where they trust you. First of all, you have to, and we use positive reinforcement in dog training to build this bond, um, but they, why are they, first of all, why are they gonna listen to you if the only interaction the two of you have is negative on their part? You know, you're just constantly screaming or, um, yelling or no, don't do that. Like what reason do they have to pay attention to you? Like at some point you just block it out and you're like, no, I don't want to hear all that screaming anymore. I don't want to hear all that negativity anymore. And you just try to get away. Right? So if all you're doing is screaming at your dog to come here, well, over time, why one, why are they going to come to you? Because all you're doing is yelling and screaming at them. And two, they're going to continue to try to get farther away from you because why do they want to be around that? Which brings me to the second part. If you have built that bond with your dog, then you have their attention. So that's the first thing is we need to build that bond to make sure that you have their attention because if you don't have their attention, they're not going to be able to listen to you. So the second part of that is your dog can only do the best they can with the information that's been provided to them. So if you haven't taught your dog that when I say come, that means stop what you're doing and come over to where I am. If you haven't been through that routine and practiced that over and over and let them know that when you say the word come, which would be a cue, um, a lot of people call them commands and you know, that's what we used to call them, but I try, you know, we're trying to, to shift away from the word commands because that's kind of a, um, uh, too much of a negative connotation to the word cue. But anyway, so if you tell your dog to come and they don't come, well, 
have you taught them that that's what that word means? That when you say that word, it means stop what you're doing and walk over back to me? Have you taught them that? And have you consistently reinforced that with, re with a reward? Um, and even once you feel confident that your dog understands that, that when you say come, that means to stop what you're doing and walk back over towards you, um, over time, you want to sporadically continue to reinforce that with rewards. So that's how we use positive reinforcement to shape and mold behaviors, even something as simple as a sit, right? Um, your dog doesn't know what the word sit means. We have to teach them that when we say the word sit, that specific action is what we're looking for them to do. And when we use positive reinforcement, which oftentimes is in uh, the form of treats, sometimes depending on the dog, whatever you know, high, whatever is going to be high value for the dog is what we want to use, but it can be, you know, just a gentle pet or, um, a playtime or a specific toy that they really love. So we, we find what's high value for your dog and we use that to reward, uh, certain behaviors and actions that we want to see in our dogs. And then we pair them with a, a word or a hand gesture, a lot of times both, so that your dog understands what it is that you want. So if all you're doing is yelling and screaming and chasing your dog around and saying, why aren't you listening to me? Stop what you're doing. I don't understand why you're not doing this. It's because they're only doing what they know how to do. And if you haven't trained them otherwise, if you haven't taught them what you want, how can you expect them to do it? So those are the two things. One, you have to build that bond with your dog and they have to be able to trust you as well as you being able to trust them and they have to understand that you're a source of positivity that that you provide reward when they do what you want that's how we um, create and modify behaviors in dogs is with positive reinforcement. So those are the two things that we have to look at if your dog isn't listening to you. And those are the two things you need to look at if your dog isn't listening to you. And um, I have a, a foundation of seven steps that I provide to every single one of my in-home clients. And it's the complete foundation I go over with them, setting them up and setting their dog up uh, to learn and for pet owners to teach. So it's the complete foundation. Everything I teach my in-home clients, I have put it into an ebook that I'm really excited for you to get your hands on. Um, and I talk a lot about it, it just sets you up to, to put you and your dog in that place you need to be to train positively. My new ebook, it's seven miracle steps to train your dog. I put a link in um, the description of this video uh, so you can just easily click on it. It's bit.ly slash the number seven steps dog training. Check out the link in the video um, description to get your copy, everything you need to set you and your dog up for success in positive training. Um, again, Again, post your questions in the comment. I would love to answer them. Dog behavior, dog training, dog nutrition. Um, got a question about your cats? Put that in there too. I, I would love to make a video to answer your questions. Get a dialogue going because chances are if it's something you're going through, other people are going through it as well. So it can be helpful to a lot of other people, not just you. Um, whether, you know, you're having trouble potty training, your dog won't stop barking, um, they won't come when called, whatever it may be, put it in the comment section below. I'd love to answer your question. Don't forget to grab your copy of 7 Miracle Steps to Train Your Dog. Check the link in the description. And with that, I will see you in the next video.